Hi everyone, my name's Ruth Cheesley and I'm project lead for Mortic. And today I'm going to be speaking for about 40 minutes about our experiences of implementing an incentivized partner program within the Mortic open source community. So for those of you who don't know me, my name's Ruth Cheesley, my pronouns are she, her. I work full time for Acquia as project lead for Mortic. My background is around about 18 years of using and contributing to different open source projects. And my base is in Ipswich in the UK. If you want the slides from this or any of the links or resources or things that I've mentioned in this talk, they're all going to be shared on my notice page afterwards. So I will also tweet that link out on at our Cheesley. So if you want to grab any of the resources or any of the information or you just want to connect afterwards, please do uh, ping me on, on Twitter. So what we're going to be covering today, we're going to be talking a bit about the contribution side of establishing this partners program. So how do we define what actually constitutes a contribution? How do we track those contributions over time? How do we assign them to organisations to understand who is contributing and who's not contributing within our project? Then the thorny subject of finances came into play. So how do we make the financial aspect of becoming a partner equitable for everyone, wherever they are in the world, so that anyone can become a partner and it's the same kind of value financially for them to do that? And for us, we had the added challenge of we didn't actually have financial autonomy, so we needed to set up some process for us to have transparency over our finances. And then finally, we'll go on to talk a bit about how we actually set this program up. What does it actually look like? What do partners get when they become a partner? How has it worked for us? So what results have we seen? Did it fulfill the goals that we were hoping it would? And also, what have we learned and what things are we going to do differently? Or what have we tweaked as the program has run its course in the community? So first off, I'll start a little bit of history about Mortic because I'm aware that some of you might not know what we are or what how we came to being. So Mortic is an open source marketing automation platform. It was formally launched to the public in 2015 and you can find more about that on mortic.org, which is our website. And we're also on GitHub as Mortic slash Mortic. When Mortic was founded, there was a corporate software as a service company created as well to provide a hosted environment of Mortic specifically aimed at businesses. That business was acquired by Acquia back in 2019. And since that point, the community has established its own governance model and it's now operating as a self-sufficient open source project. Before this point, it was very much dependent on uh, Mortic Inc and now Acquia for pretty much everything in the community from running releases to financing things to um, can we do this, should we take that direction. So it's been a really big uh, few years for the Mortic community and an awful lot has been achieved in that time. So why did we want to have a partners program to start with? Well, we had a few goals for this program. We wanted to try to encourage more in the way of practical contributions to Mortic, but also financial support for the project. And we wanted those both to be consistent. And we looked at lots of other projects and a lot of the time it's just you pay this much money, you become a partner. Well, we actually wanted to tie that status to being actively involved in creating and, and nurturing this community. So we tied in the requirement for encouraging more practical contributions in our partners program goals. We wanted to help people in our community find those people who are the makers, the people who are actively helping to support the community if they needed help with Mortic. So we really wanted them to support the people who are supporting the project and the community rather than work with people who actually aren't making Mortic better. They're just making a fast buck from the, from the project. We wanted a way to promote organisations who are contributing in a very clear and transparent way. 
So we wanted to be able to say, these are the people who are financially contributing. These are the people who are practically contributing. Uh, they're awesome. <laughs> Go find out more about them, work with them, um, have conversations with them. And this gave us a really nice way to be able to do that. We could say, here are our partners. These are the people we suggest that you work with because they're supporting us as a project on a community. And we also wanted to give those organisations who are giving their money, they're giving their time, they're really putting their heart and soul into Maltic, something to be proud of, a status that they can share and brag about in their own circles. And becoming com a community partner was something that we felt would help with that. It would give them something to be proud of, something to kind of share. So without further ado, let's jump into the programme and what we needed to put in place in order to implement this in the Maltic community. So we'll start with contributions and there are a few things we had to uh, get kind of really def defined before we could move forward with this program. Firstly, we had to decide, well, what actually is a contribution? Now, I came to open source through a non-traditional route. I don't come from a development background. I'm, you know, I have a very high level of technical knowledge, but I'm not a developer. I came in through documentation, running user groups and things. So I've always been really keen that we made sure that those contributions were just as valued and and recognized as those like creating a pull request, for example. We also needed to identify where those contributions happen. So where where are we actually looking to see has something happened that we consider a contribution? And then also, how do we track those out of channel contributions? So, for example, if someone has run a team meeting or if someone has done a really amazing issue on Jira, which is not related to code, so we wanted to find ways to track those. But also other things that might happen, like someone might speak at a conference and we could consider that as a contribution. We still needed to be able to have a way to to uh, credit those people for their contributions. And then how do we associate all of those contributions I just talked about with an organization? So the organization can be ranked and we can consider how much they are contributing, whether that's a level that we consider to be acceptable to join the partners program. So there was quite a lot for us to take on board there. When we started this program, I did quite a lot of research of how can we bring all of this information together? Like the data is there, it's in all of these different places. How can we bring all of that together into one place that lets us get that holistic overview of individuals and of organizations? And in my research, I came across an open source community CRM, which I'd not really come across the term before. So it, CRM comes from the sales word, customer relationship management tool, but this is specifically focused on building and nurturing and growing communities. It's available on GitHub at Savannah HQ slash Savannah. And it's also a hosted version, which we use because we didn't have the resources to actually manage the infrastructure, but it is an open source tool and it's really awesome. It allows us to bring together all of our community channels into one central dashboard, which we use to see how things are going in the community. It lets us determine what's a contribution. So some are baked in, like GitHub pull requests and a few other things I'm going to talk about later. But we can also define our own custom contributions. We can use the API to push contributions in directly as well. So it's really, really cool. It hit many of our requirements that we had for a tool that we could use for this purpose. And also it lets us identify an organization and then associate individuals with the organization so we can get a profile for what an organization is doing across our entire community. So this was amazing. I started off using it locally myself and then we moved on to having uh, the hosted account once we'd kind of done a proof of concept. And with Savannah, the things we track are GitHub pull requests, we also have a forum which is very busy on some on uh, discourse and in our support category we have the option for people to mark a reply as a solution to their problem so we consider those replies which are marked as solutions as um a contribution because they've contributed something which is helpful which has helped someone with a problem we also use slack and Slack is our main channel for conversations in our community where we're having sort of like working on projects together or doing um, 
team meetings, for example, all happen in Slack. And the way that the Slack integration works is it asks us, um, is this a contribution? And it's based on, for example, someone saying thank you in response to someone or someone who's uh, Slack, uh, Savannah thinks has provided useful feedback on your product or your community or something happening in your community. So that Slack integration isn't isn't sort of fully automated. We have to then say, yeah, that is a contribution or no, that actually isn't a contribution. Someone's just saying thank you sarcastically, for example. So we do have some control over that one. And then we've also got Meetup and we organize all of our um, meetups on meetup.com, which is a really great platform. If you haven't used it before, um, it allows you to organize meetups all over the world. We have an account there and all of our official meetups are managed through that. And so anyone who hosts a meetup, whether they host it on their own or with other people, it, that's considered a contribution. We also monitor Reddit. So if help is given in a thread, it comes up and we can say, yeah, that's a contribution. Stack Exchange as well, accepted answers to a question. We consider that to be a contribution because you're helping someone out. We have a podcast in our community, which the criteria for acceptance really is that they're fully altruistic. So they're not like a thinly veiled sales pitch. They're purely there to benefit the community and to grow knowledge and awareness of Mautic, for example, within our community or externally. And blogs that are written on Mautic.org, because anyone can help with writing a blog on Mautic.org. And if they're marked as the author, that will come up as a, as a contribution as well. But I mentioned that we often have other things that we need to give credit for, and I feel this is also really important. So we have the manual or API assignment and team leads in our community have access to Savannah and they can manually assign credits to a contributor for anything that they feel is relevant to have um, a contribution credit. So that might be, for example, if someone has led a sprint and they've organized the whole sprint or whatever, that might be considered a contribution. People who are speaking at our conferences, we may well add those as contributions. If you've proofread an article before it goes online, or you get the drift, all those kind of things that there's no kind of data point where we can um, say, yeah, that was a contribution, but we still want them to be valid contributions uh, in our system and that person to be credited. And there is an API as well, and this allows us to track other activities. We're not fully using it yet, but it's sort of on the radar for us to explore this year. So we use Jira for tracking tasks that are not code related tasks. And one of the things we want to do is if you're assigned to an issue and you close it for that to be considered as a contribution as well, because you've probably completed a, um, a task. And also the person who actually makes GitHub releases, for example, that's something that we're looking at doing. Another thing we're talking with Savannah about is people who um, review pull requests. So they mark it as approved or they mark it as needs uh, changes, because that's also an important part of contributing to a, a pull request being merged. And so we're bringing all of this data in, and then I use this to actually report back to the community on a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, and an annual basis. And for individual contributors, we report back on the top contributors and the most active members. And this can get quite competitive. People are quite proud about being in the shout out each month. So it's had like that added benefit of really encouraging people to be like, oh, wow, these are the people who are really helping to make Mautic. And also the people who are contributing are a bit like, I want to get in the top 10 because I want to be in the shout out. And in terms of the organizations, it's quite similar. We report on the top contributing organizations and also on the most active. And with organizations, we also do a plus minus compared to the month before. So it shows whether organizations are increasing or decreasing their contributions over time. So here's a quick screenshot that shows you the monthly shout out, which I just mentioned. So this is the one that gives a shout out for organizations. And if there's something unusual in the data, like this was December and there were two weeks in the month where most people were not working. So all the contributions bar, I think one company were lower than they were the month before. So I usually just call that out if there's something that I know is slightly um, strange in the data. And, uh, also, we give people information about how to 
get in this list so basically how we assign people to to organizations and what contributions are defined as and the monthly shout out for individuals is very similar just we're mentioning people we don't have the up down arrows um, and if they don't have a slack profile so you'll see they're just mentioned by like their forum username for example or the name that they've used on github because they're not yet on slack and we also mention the number of new contributors we've had in that time period and the number of new members who've been joining the community. And again, because this was December, we had slightly less people joining. It's not really surprising because a lot of people are away from their computers, hopefully anyway, over the festive period. So that's how we dealt with the um, contribution side and getting a sense of how we can determine how an organization is contributing to the project over time and look at the activity levels. Let's talk about the finance now. So this was probably one of the slightly more tricky areas for us to uh, get into place. We needed to figure out first, how do we actually accept money? At that time, the only money we had available to us was money from Acquia. And we had to ask every time we needed to spend money. We had to make a business case. It had to go through all the formal Acquia processes. It was quite clunky. You know, they're a very big company with a very big financial team. We wanted to have a way to be able to manage this all ourselves. And also we were planning our first ever conference. So we needed to be able to sell tickets and spend that money in a transparent way and have the money come back to the community. We also needed to decide how much is enough for us to consider that someone is contributing financially to the project. So we needed to be able to set a threshold to say, this is the level that you need to be contributing at over this much time, which is the next point, how, you know, how long do we have that um, taking place over? And also, how do we make that threshold equitable worldwide? Because if we set it at $100, $100 in the US is a different value to in the UK, is a different value to Nigeria, is of different value to Russia, for example. So we needed to find a way to make the amount you had to contribute fair wherever you were in the world. So fun times. <laughs> For us, financial transparency was really key. I wanted to make sure that everybody could see all of the money coming in, all of the money going out, that there was the ability for us to have several admins uh, who are responsible for approving or rejecting expenses. So again, we did lots of research. I asked lots of other open source communities how they were dealing with this challenge. What were the tools that they were using that worked well for them? We knew it wasn't going to work to have a bank account because I'm based in the UK. Other members of our team are based all over the world. We've got people in Africa, people in Europe. Banks are just not really set up for that nowadays. And the transparency to the community was really important for us. So we ended up setting up a open collective hosted by the open source collective to effectively act as our bank. They hold and manage our funds, but they also allow us to create projects to raise money for specific projects within our community, to sell tickets for events, for example, and also to access some services like HR services if we're working with contractors, training services. So I'm going through a bunch of training courses at the moment to help me be better at leading the community. So it was a really great opportunity for us to actually get started in managing our money. We also applied for GitHub sponsors. And GitHub Sponsors is tightly integrated with Open Collective, so it just pushes the money across to our Open Collective every month. And it allows people to sponsor us in either places, either on Open Collective or on GitHub Sponsors, whatever works best for them. Some prefer GitHub because of the prominence on their company page, for example. Others prefer Open Collective for other reasons. So that was us getting started. But then how do we make those thresholds that I talked about equitable? How do we make them fair around the world? Well, my previous life, I used to uh, volunteer in the Joomla community and they had this, this question as well when they were looking at pricing their certifications. And they looked at using a tool called the Big Mac Index. So if you've never come across it, it's something created by The Economist. 
And it's very interesting to read about. You can read the information there, but it basically allows us to determine a relative amount based on various factors for countries around the world. Now, it's not perfect. So you'll notice that there's one country right at the beginning here um, that's going through massive hyperinflation. So obviously it's not going to be very applicable there. But generally, by and large, it does actually work really well and it does give us a level that's fair, or we believe that's fair, for everyone around the world, wherever they are. So here you can see the figures that actually, the amount that you would have to pay, for example. So if you were in Sri Lanka, it would be $62, I think it is. My eyesight's not so good. If you were in Vietnam, it would be $51. If you're in the US, it's $100 a month. So this is the minimum contribution that you have to pay by country. And the nice thing about this is it allows us to... Um, yeah, make that fair, but also make it very clear to people. And if their country isn't here, we just try to find out what the Big Mac cost is in their country and we can work out the calculation uh, or we can do some maths with similar countries. So that's how we get on with that. The next challenge we had was how long? So how long do we actually um, keep these contributions going before we consider that it's OK uh, to become a partner? And we decided that it should be three months. So three months is the minimum term for having consistent financial contributions and consistent practical contributions to Mortic. So that's the time period from when they apply. We look back over the last three months to see have they been contributing in both ways. OK. So that's the financial aspect of this. We'll next move on to how we actually built the programme. So how does it actually work in, in, you know, in action and what do the partners get from it? So we're going to cover how do they apply to join as a partner? What do they actually get as a community partner? And also, how are we trying to incentivize them? So in terms of applying to become a partner, Basically, it's the onus is on the partner, so they can apply when they meet the criteria. They must meet the criteria before we consider them uh, for being a partner. And you can see the criteria here on the side, but basically it is listed as at least three months contributing. And we look in Savannah to see the activity for that. At least three months financial contribution at the minimum level and we set it based on the country of their head office or their primary location. We also have tied into this that there are no code of conduct breaches against the organisation or team members in the past 12 months and we also track this in Savannah. We have the option to apply uh, like tags or labels and have notes against individuals and companies. So if there have been any issues, which we haven't had any incidents of this nature, but if there were, then that would affect their partnership status. So what do they get in, in um, if they become a partner? What do they actually receive? Well, first off, they receive a very prominent listing in our partners directory. Each partner has their own page in the directory and that page includes a backlink to their website and you can see the listing here of our, some of our current um, partners. We put the top three partners, so Acquia Friendly and Neutrefeu Digital Marketing at the moment, we put them actually on the home page of Mortic.org in a featured partners block. So the top three are always featured on the home page with a link to their partners page. So that's a real great thing for them in terms of raising awareness of their brand within the community and for people who are new to the community. We rank this list of partners based on their activity and the contributions in the previous month. So we rejig the order based on their order in the shout out that we do at the end of the month, basically. And that we also mention them in all of our official conferences. So generally speaking, it's in the keynotes where I mention all of our partners and thank them and so on and so forth. So again, it's another way of being uh, recognised in a, a formal, official way by the project. And the individual page that our partners have allows them to showcase the services that they provide and also the contributions that they make. 
So you'll see here that um, in terms of Acquia's page, it mentions that one of their contributions is paying me full time to work as project lead. They also have the engineering team, which pretty much did the whole of our Multic 3 release, which was a massive, massive undertaking. And they're a major contributor to strategic initiatives. We give an overview of the company with all of their contact information, what they do. We highlight the contributors who have been active in the last month. We list them by name. And we also have a graph of their activity over the last quarter in terms of contributions and conversations. So it gives people an idea of actually how active are they in the community at this time. They can list relevant case studies, which goes into our main case studies uh, database. And also there's an opportunity for them to give information about any partners programs that they might have for people who are using Mortic. So for example, if they are using Mortic, but they want to have a partnership with an agency for larger clients or for when they can't service the client themselves, the agencies can all provide their partners information if they have a partners program and encourage people to reach out to them. And there's also a lead generation form or a link to their website if they prefer to have a like a button to say, go here, fill in this form, which enables them to get all the information they need in order to put through a sales inquiry effectively. Another feature that we have for our partners is that of roadmap prioritization. So generally speaking, the process in the Mortic community at present for new feature requests is people will put in a feature request on our forum. We have an ideas category in our forum. They'll explain what it is and then the community will have some discussions and people can vote. So they have a specific number of votes which they can use to vote for features that they want to see in Mortic. And the top features that are voted are the ones that we consider for the roadmap and, and start to work on. If you're a partner, you have the option of being able to submit up to three features directly to me, the project lead, per calendar year, and they can either be funded. So you could say, I want to have a, a new experience for creating focus items and here's $5,000 that I have. I just don't have the resources to build it myself. Or it could be unfunded. So they say, we need this feature. It's really important for Mortic. We can't fund it, but we're happy to help with promoting it and trying to get funding or whatever. And those features come directly to me for consideration to be in the roadmap without having to go through that process of community voting and prioritization. So that's a feature that only partners have. It's not, it's not available to anyone else. And we also try to really make sure that we promote our partners we promote them on social media and through email uh, when they actually become a partner, because that's a really great thing to share with our community that we have a new partner who's contributing in that way. We also feature our partners on every community newsletter we send, icons and links to their partners page on the website. And we try as much as we can to reshare relevant news from our partners into our social media channels. So we're promoting awareness of what they are doing within our kind of sphere of influence. We're telling other people what they're doing in their companies. So how has it worked for us? So over the last, so we've had the partners program probably for about a year so far. And over the last year, we've seen a significant uptake in sponsorships from organisations. We've also enrolled six partners and we have one more partner in review at the moment. So by the end of this quarter, we should have seven active partners in our partners programme. We've seen sustained contributions from partners. So we've only had, I think, one month where one partner fell off the radar slightly with their contributions, mainly because of staff sickness with COVID. But generally speaking, every partner has maintained a, a consistent level of uh, contribution, practically and financially. And in fact, we've seen some partners really accelerate their contributions so that they can get up the uh, rankings and be featured more highly. Oh, that's not the only reason. Obviously, they love contributing and they see the value. But, you know, that is part of the uh, incentive as well. 
Interestingly, we've seen new contributions from people who want to be partners, but they're not actively contributing in the community and they want to know how. So this has been everything from like pull requests to people helping write documentation to people helping with running events, all kinds of places in the community. We've had people stepping up and say, can I help with this? Can I help with that? Um, ultimately, because they need to be able to show that they are contributing in the community. And we've enabled community members to build relationships with those makers in the community. So it's driving mutually beneficial growth in the ecosystem. If those people and those organizations succeed and grow and thrive, it means they'll have more capacity to be able to help the Mortic project succeed and grow and thrive. So from our perspective, it's a no brainer to really try and grow those organizations because they see the value and we get the value in our community. One of the things we really learned, or I really learned, I should say, is that transparency really matters. So it's really important that if you're implementing this kind of uh, program in your community, that you have very clear policies and workflows which cover the whole process from what the criteria is to become a partner, what you have to do in order to um, apply, how the application is reviewed, who reviews it, what the workflows are, how you promote them, the whole process. It just makes it much less open to um, concern or criticism if you have it all clearly documented. And I've shared on my notice page links to some of our policies in the Mortic community in case you want to take a look at some of the policies that we've written. I also think it's really important that you're clear on the expectations that, that you, uh, partners have in terms of your promotion of them. So how you're actually going to promote partners once they've signed up because they may expect more of you than you're actually able to deliver. And that can lead to some bumpy conversations. So be really clear how much is in your capacity to actually do for your partners and how much uh, they should expect in that regard. I also think it's really clear, really important to set very clear guidelines on what they can list on their partner's page. In fact, for our perspective, it has to be reviewed. So like they have to provide the content to us, we review it and we actually upload it to the page because we don't want those partners pages turning into like a spam fest. They need to be useful and relevant and not just like buy me, sell me, that kind of thing. So yeah, be really clear how many backlinks you're willing to allow, what information, and how many words, you know, that kind of information they're allowed to provide on, on those pages. So then coming to the end, so I thought I would share some thoughts of what would we change if we were doing this again, or what are we changing in this process? So by far and away for me, one of the biggest things is that I have to update those pages every month. So I have to update the, um, images with the activity, have to update the names of the people who are active and the order. It would be amazing to be able to automate that or embed the images and the resources and the information on the portal. Uh, that is sort of um, limited by what Savannah has available. And it's a discussion that I'm having with one of, with the person who maintains that project. But for me, that's a it's something that was a compromise that I was willing to take, but as we scale the program, it's, it will become more and more difficult and take longer to actually do that each month. I definitely feel like we need to, as we're scaling, we need to improve the capabilities on our port portal, our partners portal, so that people can actually search and filter for providers who have a SaaS solution, providers who support you hosting your own Mortic solution, um, people who speak German, people who are based in the Middle East, that kind of thing. At the moment, we don't have that capability. And so it's not so easy for people to find who they're looking for. So that was purely a um, factor of needing to get the MVP up and running very quickly. So it's all built with just basic static pages in Drupal with the layout builder. 
So ultimately what we want to do is actually build a portal or find a, a plugin or an extension that will allow us to do that more effectively so people can find the partners that they want to work with. I'd also like to find a way to automate that following up process if partners are declining in that activity or like send me an email to say this partner has got a 50% reduction or something like that. A lot of the stats and everything are manual at the moment. So again, it's it's a little bit time consuming and it relies on uh, people following up on that. We've been having discussions in our leadership team about the potential of having a tiered program. So it, at the moment, it's just you're a partner or you're not a partner. And we've been talking about in the future, we might consider having different levels based on probably based on financial and practical contributions we haven't really fleshed it all out yet, but that's something that we're considering. We went for this sort of like very basic one level, no tier system to get it up and running quickly and easily with the minimum amount of fuss. But we do feel like some of our partners are doing a lot more than others. So we do, we're thinking about how we can recognize that basically. And also we're looking at ways we can help them and we can help the community. So some of the things we're exploring there are things like sponsored content. So allowing our partners to write content for our blog, which is relevant and useful for our audience. But that is a sponsored content piece. So it's talking about perhaps their platform or their tools or whatever. Uh, but it's very clearly marked as sponsored content. So that's another thing that we're trying to think, how can we give more value? to our partners, but at the same time, be getting value in our community and it not just be a spam fest of like, buy my services. It needs to be something that's relevant for the for our audience, as well as giving value to our partners. So that's me done. I am happy to take any questions. If you want to email me rather than discuss in the chat, you can contact me at, at rift.cheesy at mortic.org. As I mentioned at the start, I'm going to upload all of my resources onto my notice page, which is noti.st forward slash rcheesley. So the slides will be there, the recording with subtitles will be there, the links that I've mentioned, and also some other useful resources like the policies that we've put in place and other things that I've found useful in this process are all going to be up on my notice page. So I will tweet the link out as well. So you should be able to access that uh, on the on Twitter. But yeah, any questions, I'm here to answer. So feel free to fire away. Thank you for your time.